One of my favorite things about being a priest, really about being Christian, is preaching. To stand in front of a packed church and open the Word of God. To share my faith. To give people the gift of insight about the mysteries of God. It's just incredible. Honestly, I don't even have to be the one preaching. I love to hear good sermons and homilies. When you get the opportunity to worship with someone who truly lives the faith, someone who is not only on fire with the Holy Spirit, but gifted enough to speak in a captivating way, it's just fantastic. Even now as a priest, I love to sit back and watch others hone their craft, to see how they can make the Word of God come alive. Now, as Catholics, we know that there is much more to worship than just the words of the minister, that we gather to become what we receive, the body of Christ. But you can't tell me that the homily isn't what's on everyone's minds. People may want to celebrate the Eucharist, yes, but I know for a fact that people go from church to church to find it celebrated in the way they think is best. I know for a fact that preaching has always been an essential part of missionary work, that the great evangelizers of our church got people in the church in the first place by their eloquent and meaningful words. Augustine, John Chrysostom, Anthony of Padua, Bernadine of Siena, Francis Xavier, Fulton Sheen, their words inspired faith and grew the church. Unfortunately, I know that the opposite is true as well, that poor preaching can also dampen the faith. Even though it's the same Eucharist, the same true worship, a priest that has no life can absolutely suffocate a congregation and extinguish a church. Over and over again, people who have left the church complain that they did so not over some big theological issue or political strife, but because they no longer found the church to be relevant anymore. For years, they had heard unrelatable stories, cheap jokes, and altogether boring explanations of a book they knew little about and eventually it just didn't seem worth it anymore. I talk with lay people all the time who are excited about their faith, who want to raise their children in the church and just suffer through the homily each week. They're not being fed by their priests. They're being slowly frozen to death. In my experience, the problem is not a doctrinal one. While yes, there are certainly some errors that get taught from time to time, and there are definitely some who make the pulpit into their own personal soapbox for political issues, a problem unto itself, I really don't think that the issue has much to do with intellect. Many priests come out of seminary with a great command of scripture, a solid foundation in doctrine, a desire to teach the faithful, and yet are still weak preachers. This is not to say that the problem is a matter of skill either. I've met plenty of people who were technically very bad writers and bad speakers, and yet somehow incredible preachers. Lord knows I've met the opposite, that there are more than a few people who could star in an Aaron Sorkin film, and yet were absolutely dreadful to listen to. Most priests do not lack the charisma or ability to speak in front of large groups of people, and yet that doesn't mean that their homilies are life-giving either. No, when I think about the worst homilies I've heard over the years, the ones that left me with glazed over eyes, wishing that I was anywhere else, the problem wasn't that they needed more education or practice, it's that they had no idea how to make the Word of God relevant to the people they were speaking to. While the primary purpose of the homily is not entertainment, I think that too many homilists wrongly err on the other side, treating it as an exegetical lecture. The homily is to teach about the meaning of scripture, yes, but not just as an event that took place 2,000 years in the past and is over, a mere explanation of historical events. The homily is about recognizing that the Word of God is alive, present in teaching today just as before. Scripture teaches us that God answered the prayers of Hannah, healed the leper, and converted Paul many years ago, but we also know that God answers the prayers of so many of us when we're desperate, heals us when we are sick, and calls us to convert our hearts. We may have stopped adding things to the Bible long ago, but God hasn't stopped working in his people. The homily must make this connection. If it doesn't, people are going to be left wondering where God is in our world. I met a woman once who told me that she stopped going to church September 15th, 2001. She knew the exact date because it was the Sunday after the September 11th attacks. Distraught by what had happened, looking for answers, she went to church that weekend and the priest made no mention of it at all in his homily. Didn't even acknowledge it. 
As she said, he just rambled on about something in Exodus that made no sense to her and did nothing to help her fading faith in a God that would allow such atrocities. She saw no reason to return the following week and hasn't been back since. This just cannot happen. I know that it's an extreme example, but that sort of approach happens every week. People come to church struggling with their faith, struggling with the big questions of life, looking to faith for consolation and strength. And too often they are given either overly complicated and technical explanations of an ancient book or a meandering potpourri of non sequiturs that never scratches below the surface. As priests, we have to do better. I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that preaching on Sunday is the most important thing that we do. For most people, it is the only interaction with the church they'll have all week and the only thing keeping them from giving up. So what do we do? How do we fix this? Obviously, there are many ways to go about this, and I make no claims of being an expert with a secret formula for perfect preaching. I'm still new at this myself, working week by week to get better. That said, I have had some great teachers, and I've found that when I'm able to give a good homily or talk, it's because I've remembered three things. First, if you want to give a relevant, meaningful homily or talk, you have to start with the desire to be relevant. I know that sounds a bit oversimplified, but it can be that simple. If you want to connect with the people that you're preaching to, your starting points must be the people. What are they going through? What aspects of faith are most challenging for them right now? What questions are they asking, either explicitly or subconsciously? For Catholics, the homily is almost always about the readings. You can't just pick any topic and start preaching, but you can have the people in mind when you're praying with the scriptures. You should be reading the passages through their eyes. When I start preparing a homily, I go through the text with certain people in mind, wondering how they might read it. What words do they stumble over? What teachings challenge them? What does this have anything to do with their lives? When I preach, I try to focus on one of those things. I try to come up with a question that people might be asking about the scriptures, the current world, a life of faith, and make the homily about answering that question. What this does is two things. It ensures that what I choose to say will ultimately have a direct connection to their lives, but also, point number two, that there will be a clear focus to the homily. By far, the biggest mistake that homilists make that cause them to lose people in their homilies is that they try to do too much. Because they only get to preach once a week, they feel like they have to cover absolutely everything under the sun in one homily, and so either jump from topic to topic, or worse, go on for about 15 or 20 minutes. People might get something out of it, sure, but they're not going to be able to follow everything and most likely won't remember it a few days later. What I like to do is to take that relevant question I'm trying to address and frame it into a single sentence that I want people to be able to walk away with. It can be a complex sentence, but it must be clear and easily remembered. Faith isn't just about sitting in church, it's about going out and being church for the world. Boom, clear, concise, easily remembered. While God hears all of our prayers, there are some reasons that he might not answer them. Setup, nuance. Two parts, but logical transition. Like a strong driving winds, the Holy Spirit has the power to give life and destroy it. This was my Pentecost homily last year. Before I write a single word of the homily, I put that core idea in clear and simple language at the top of my page. This is my guide. This is what I want people to walk away with, and so this is what everything in the homily should point to. As I go through, I look at every paragraph, every story, every point that I want to make and ask myself, does this directly support the core idea or not? Sometimes I'll find that that great little story I wanted to tell, the small aside, the interesting fact about the passage just doesn't fit, so I have to cut it out. If it doesn't leave people to the singular purpose you hope to achieve, it doesn't matter how good it is, it's a distraction. Drop it. The fact of the matter is that there isn't much real estate in a homily. You've got 8, 10, maybe 12 minutes to make an enormous claim of faith. That's not a long time. Starting off with a joke or story that doesn't directly lead to the overall point is time wasted and attention spans lost. As my homily professor taught us, your job isn't to grab their attention, you already have it. Your job is to be clear and relevant enough that you keep it. 
Now, how do you do this, you ask? Well, by telling stories, I think, which is the third and final point. As far as I'm concerned, every good homily has three stories to it. The story of the homilist faith, the story of the scriptures, and the story of the people. What I mean by this is not that you have to tell three literal stories with a beginning, middle, and end, but that every homily needs to speak to all three components of the worship. As the one professing my faith, how does my own experience relate to the core idea of the homily? How do I answer the questions at hand from my life of faith? As I read the scriptures, what does God have to say about the core idea? What can we learn from the inspired sources handed on to us? And as the congregation, how does this have anything to do with them? What can and must they do now that they've found the answer to their question? Honestly, it doesn't have to be complicated. Many of my homilies follow this exact structure. I share an experience of my life, a problem that I faced. I look to scripture to explain how God gives us clarity and direction, and then conclude with how this applies to each of us and what we can do about it. It's not particularly creative or artistic, but it's focused, meaningful, and easily remembered. Because all three components point to the same idea, sometimes even repeating the same single line for effect, people are going to be able to recall the homily days later. The personal story, if compelling enough, is probably going to stick out in their minds because it spoke to their experience as well and led them right to the heart of the gospel. It's all connected, which is ultimately the point of preaching. When I stand in front of people to preach, my primary goal isn't to make people smarter or to chastise them into repentance. It's to show them that the word of God is relevant in their lives, that faith speaks directly to our experience. I'm not a lecturer, a historian, or ethicist. I'm a man of faith, hoping to share that faith with others, hoping to make clear the direct and tangible ways that God is working in our lives. That is what it's about. Really, that's it. Preachers, if you can do that, the faith will flourish. You won't need to teach them every doctrine or explain every pericope of scripture, for you have brought to life the desire in them to seek more themselves. You have instilled in them the confidence that faith does have the answer to life's issues, that God is with them through it all. Please, fellow preachers, take your craft seriously. We have an incredible opportunity to fan the flames of the Holy Spirit in our people, building up the church here on earth. But we also have the horrible power to stamp it out.